Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a chemical that has inverse solubility. Let me show you what that means. We know that when you want to dissolve something, it helps to heat it up. The one on the left is hot water and the one on the right is cold water. Let's see what happens when I put a spoonful of sugar in each of these. Do two spoonfuls in each of them. For example, if I want to dissolve the sugar faster or dissolve more of it in water, then I should heat it up. This one's at room temperature and this one's almost boiling. So the hot water completely dissolved the sugar. It's a clear solution now, but the cold water one has a ton of sugar on the bottom still. So not only did the hot water dissolve the sugar faster, but it could also hold more dissolved sugar than the cold water. So this seems pretty reasonable for most things. The heat provides more energy to break the bonds of the solid so it can dissolve. So obviously heating it up makes things dissolve easier. This happens with pretty much any solid. Heat the water up and it will dissolve easier. But that's not the case for everything. There are actually solids that have something called inverse solubility, like this calcium acetate for example. I have a solution of this calcium acetate dissolved in water here. But watch what happens when I heat it up. You can see some of the white powder forming, so it's undissolving as I heat it up. So this water is almost boiling now, and suddenly I start to have white chunks in it. This is the cold one here, and you can see it's completely this white liquid. And then the hot one, you can see that there's this white solid forming on top here. This is so weird. The hotter it gets, the less it dissolves in the water. So I'm left over with this wet powder here. The water can actually hold less calcium acetate when it's hot than when it's cold. Why would this happen? The reason this happens has to do with whether or not the solid naturally releases heat or absorbs heat when it dissolves. For example, you can see that when the salt dissolves in water, it actually makes it colder. So this is just kosher salt. We call this an endothermic reaction, meaning it absorbs heat from the environment. It actually gets colder. But if I take this calcium acetate and dissolve it in water, it heats the water up. So it's exothermic. That means it gives off heat. The thing with endothermic reactions is that when you provide more heat, it makes the reaction go faster because it's wanting to absorb the heat. But with exothermic reactions, the opposite is true. When you provide more heat to the reaction, it actually slows the reaction down because the reaction is wanting to give off heat instead of absorbing it. So since the calcium acetate dissolving is exothermic, if we heat it, it slows the reaction down. This is actually Le Chatelier's principle at work. What happened here with the calcium acetate is rare for solids, but it's actually the norm for gases. When you dissolve gases in water, it's exothermic. So that means that the hotter your water is, the less gas can dissolve in your liquid. So that's why hot soda releases so much more CO2 quickly than cold soda. This is a cold soda and this is a warm one. This one is rock hard and I can't even push it in. And this one easily dents in. The hot soda can't hold the CO2 so it gets released as a gas. But the cold soda can hold much more CO2 than the warm soda. That's why warm soda is more likely to explode in a can than cold soda because it tries to release the CO2 that's dissolved in it and so that makes a higher pressure in the can than at a lower temperature. Now before we end, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, JLC PCB. They're an in-house production factory with hundreds of industrial 3D printers. They can give you free online instant quotes and even provide you 48-hour delivery of your products. They have multiple choices for 3D printing tech and materials. Their services are really affordable, with 3D printing parts starting at only $1 and the stainless steel parts starting from $8. So if you want to check them out, there are a lot of discounts for new users. For example, you can get $54 in coupons if you click the link in my description or go to jlcpcb.com. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did and you're not subscribed to my channel yet, consider hitting the subscribe button and check out theactionlab.com for Action Lab gear. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.